Word of the triumph in New York likely did not reach Alice Paul, who'd been behind bars for more than two weeks at that point. On her second day in, she'd incited her fellow suffrage prisoners to rebellion, encouraging them to fling shoes, tin drinking cups, whatever they could lay their hands on, through the high windows, just as she'd done eight years earlier in a London jail. For that, she was placed in solitary confinement, cell door bolted round the clock. No mail, no visitors. However gaily you start out in prison to keep up a rebellious protest, it is nevertheless a terribly difficult thing to do in the face of the constant cold and hunger of undernourishment. By the end of the second week, the daily ration of worm-riddled pork and dry bread had left Paul so feeble she had to be transferred to the jail's hospital. There, she decided the time had come to declare a hunger strike, another tactic she'd mastered during her time in the British suffragette army. Hunger strikes are now a understood way of drawing publicity to a movement that's otherwise up against a political power that they can't stop. They were being arrested repetitively, and she needed to do something to break the cycle. And a hunger strike was, yet again, taking it to the next level. Paul refused nourishment for three days. On the fourth, she was carted by stretcher to the psychopathic ward, tied down, and force-fed a mixture of milk and eggs through a tube shoved down her throat. This she would endure twice daily so long as she remained in jail. Alice Paul is singularly focused, almost to the point where you could characterize her as a zealot for suffrage. She is, by all accounts, an absolute force of nature. Once she's made a decision on a strategy, she believes in her heart and in all of her actions that she's doing the right thing. The news of Paul's ordeal, which played all across the country, was followed by yet more pickets, more arrests, more suffragists standing trial. This was an extraordinary innovation in the tactics of protest. People deliberately getting arrested, hunger strikes, doing it for the media. And it was the first time you had this kind of nonviolent, ongoing civil disobedience on a great public issue in the nation's capital. It had never been done before in the United States. The fact that a woman will put her body on the line for her right to be a citizen is considered shocking. But women are realizing that if they don't act in these ways, nothing will change. <laughs> 